All right, continuing on to the first problem of this rapid fire video, if you're watching the 10A, it was problem six from fall 2021. It's the last problem of the 12A from the same test. Um, if you were timing yourself during this test, I did check my time. I timed myself taking it to see how I would do. I did check my time and when I started this problem, I was right about the six minute mark. And to be honest, that's probably a little bit slow. I got hung up on that three longer than I would have liked. It would be better if it had been five minutes. Every test is different though. You'll be slower or faster than this depending on the difficulty of that year. So Elmer the emu takes 44 strides to walk between consecutive telephone poles on a rural road. Well, good that it's rural unless you usually see emus in the city, right? So they tell us that it's very important, yeah? So Oscar the ostrich can cover the same distance in 12 equal leaps. The telephone poles are evenly spaced and the 41st pole along this road is exactly one mile, 5,280 feet from the first pole. Now this particular situation where you've got like pole, pole, right? If you have a number of evenly spaced poles, if there's four poles, for instance, then the gaps are the distance. There's only three gaps. So hopefully you didn't divide by 41. This is a common setup. There's been several times it's come up on AMC 10 and AMC 8 in the past. So um, if you haven't done a lot of past tests, including AMC 8s, you might have been at a disadvantage on this because it took you longer to think of that. The rest of us were able to look at this because we solved so many past problems and we just go, there's 40 gaps. So what I want to know is what's the distance between each pole? I'm going to find that out now. It's 5,280 feet divided by the 40 gaps. And we're going to find the feet per gap. So I'm going to divide the zeros out immediately. Four goes into 500. I go in reverse when I divide, not the other way. Four goes into 500. I'm basically thinking of it like this. It goes into here 125 times. It goes into there seven. 125 plus seven is 132 feet per gap. Okay, and obviously if I'm solving, I'm not explaining what I'm doing. I just do the work. Okay, so 132 feet per gap. Okay, then let's see if this, these play well together. If it takes 44 strides for the emu, okay, then we want to do 132 divided by 44. Now I'm going to put it as four times 11, but actually I'm going to do that. It's just three. You should be able to see that. But if you can't, 11 goes into 132 times by 12 times. And uh, you should know that. Thanks, times tables. Four goes into 12 three times. So it's going to take uh, three feet per step or whatever it is, uh, he's doing what? Uh, strides, so he's got three feet per stride, okay? Uh, for the e emu, this is the emu calculation. All right, now, the gap between the poles doesn't change for Oscar. He's gonna have the same gap between his two poles, so he's got 132 feet, and uh, that's per, per gap, and he only takes 12 leaps to cover that gap. We already know it goes in 11. So he gets 11 feet per, what is it, leap. 11 feet per leap. So the difference between him and the emu is going to be eight. Let's see what it says. How much longer in feet is Oscar's leap than Elmer's stride? 11 to three is a difference of eight. Answer choice B, let's get to the next problem. All right, and now for problem seven from our fall AMC 10A from 2021. It's also the 12A problem six. As shown in the figure below, down here, point E lies in the opposite half plane determined by line CD from point A so that angle CDE is 110. Now you may be like, what's this opposite half plane? You know what? It doesn't matter because they gave us a picture. So you don't have to think about that too much. I mean, I, maybe a little bit, but I wouldn't waste a lot of time, you know, trying to calculate, wait a minute, what do they mean by, is that some kind of a trick? Because you know they're tricky sometimes. But luckily, the picture's kind of giving it all away. Um, and then since it says picture not drawn to scale, then you should probably worry um, about proper interpretation there. Point F lies on AD, and you see it right here, so that DE is equal to DF. Mark it right now, that means this is an isosceles triangle and ABCD is a square. 
what is the degree measure of angle AFE? That's this angle out here. Well, you might be like, well, this is an exterior angle to the triangle, and so these must add up to 70. And then you're going to get it wrong because that's not an exterior angle of the triangle. The exterior angle would be this one. And so if you wanted to, I guess one thing you could do, since the whole thing is 110 and this much is 90, this would be 20. And then you could use your exterior angle knowledge to come up with this is 10 and 10. I'll put it like this so you can see it. Those two angles are 10. In an isosceles triangle, the angles opposite the equal sides are equal. That should be very common knowledge for most of you. And if you're not acquainted with these kinds of tests, this goes in the small notebook. It comes up all the time. So uh, the other way you could have done it, you could have taken the whole 110, added this 90 to get 200, and then you would know that the whole angle here is 110. 360 and so it would leave in that triangle basically you would have a 160 degree angle and then again since you knew these two angles were equal they would both be 10. Now how does that help us? We want AFE. AFE this outside angle you could do it two ways again. You could take this 160 plus the 10 or you could just take this 10 and subtract it from 180 because the angles on here make up 180. So you're going to get 170, answer choice D. I hope you're making good time at this point in the test. Let's get to the next problem. So here we go on the 2021 fall AMC 10A problem eight. A two digit positive integer is said to be cuddly? A two, an in, what? An it cuddly? I don't usually think of integers as cuddly. When I think of cuddly, I think of my dog. My dog. Say hi. This is cute. This is cuddly. Two digit integers aren't cuddly. Oh, oh, I guess we're still teaching. I don't know where my dog went. The magic of film. All right, so two digit integers aren't really cuddly. There's no real word in math for cuddly, which is why they put it in italics. They're getting to make up whatever they want. This is very common on the test where they use words. They didn't actually put quotations. I just can't write in italics on the board because I didn't take calligraphy with markers. So if it is equal to the sum of its non-zero tens digit, non-zero tens digit and the square of its units digit. Okay, so we got two digit. This is in my small notebook. It's one of the entries. It simply says this. A, B equals 10, A plus B. It's the most basic fundamental block of in number theory, basically. Um, you can think of this no different as like 47 equals 10 times four plus seven. But if we don't know what the digits are, we write it like this. Okay, so what does it say? The sum of its non-zero tens digit, that's A, and the square of its units digit. So that would be B squared. And we're going to get 10A plus B. Okay, so now I've got 10A plus B equals this. All right, if this is true, it's cuddly, I guess. All right, so how many two digit positive integers are cuddly? Okay, so subtract A to get 9A, subtract B to get B squared minus B, but I kind of feel like maybe I should factor out the B so that it becomes b minus one after you move the b over there. Now, because b is a digit, we know the only possibilities are zero to nine. Those are the only digits. And if you plug in zero, you're gonna get a negative, so that's not going to work. Uh, let's try plugging in one. You also are going to get zero, and a cannot be zero. So the first thing you'll try for b is two. And notice that since you're multiplying it by b minus one, it's basically two consecutive integers with b being the larger. And you're looking for one of these calculations such that it's a multiple of nine. Well, that means we need two factors of three and we can go through this process very fast if we realize things like that. Let's look at them. There's two times one, three times two, four times three, five times four, six times five, seven times six, I'm running out of space. Uh, eight times seven and nine times eight. Those are the only 
digit combos of a number and the number one or digit or integer and the digit one smaller than it, right? So two, one, three, two, all the way down. Now, how many of these are divisible by nine? Because they're gonna have to be if they're gonna be cuddly. So this one's not, no, no, no. There's a three in here, but no, a three in there, but no. There's no threes in here. There are two threes here. This is the only one. In other words, B is nine. And so you've got B, which is nine. What does that make A? If I plug it in, it's nine A would equal 72, the product of nine and eight. If I now divide by nine, A will equal eight. So then we're going to get 89 as our number. But we need to check it to make sure it works because it kind of felt weird, right? I mean, we don't usually think about cuddly numbers that much. So uh, let's just double check. Does 89 equal the sum of its, or nine times its tens digit, right? Actually, no, over here. Does it equal the tens digit eight plus nine squared? Eight plus nine squared. Again, it's just a quick check to make sure we didn't make a mistake in our thinking. 81 plus eight, 89. This is gonna be the only one that works. The answer's going to be one. Let's get on to the next problem. And we continue with the fall 2021 AMC 10A problem nine. When a certain unfair die is rolled, an even number is three times as likely to appear as an odd number. Should we think about the probability of one and then two? No, 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 just even and odd. So the probability of odd, we can call it X, and the probability of even is three times as likely. It doesn't matter what the actual number is, just its parity or its odd or even property. So then the sum of these, because there's only even or odd that you can get, the sum of these must equal one, which tells you that X is one fourth. So then this will be one fourth and this will be three fourths. Now we continue. Notice we stopped right here because that's all you need to do to process that much of the information. That way you're well equipped, you made sense of what you read, you're well equipped to move on in the problem. The die is rolled twice. What is the probability that the sum of the numbers rolled is even? Okay, so if you're gonna get even, you have to add an even plus an even or an odd plus an odd. So you get to get two evens basically on your two rolls, even though this is a plus sign, you multiply the probabilities. It's the probability of even on the first roll times the probability of even on the second roll. Why do you multiply? Because they're independent events. One does not affect the other. The fact that you got an even on your first roll does not impact the chance of even on the second roll, and you can multiply such events. So the chance of getting O is one fourth, meaning odd, and then times one fourth chance of getting odd on the second one as well. This is going to give you nine sixteenths and one sixteenth. Nine sixteenths plus one sixteenth is ten sixteenths. That's gonna simplify to five eighths. And uh, let's get on to problem number 10. And so here we are, continuing with the fall 2021 AMC 10A problem 10, the last problem of this rapid fire set. It's also the 12A problem seven. A school has 100 students and five teachers, okay? In the first class period, each student taking one class, each teacher teaching one class, logically. The enrollments in taking the classes are this. Let T be the average value obtained if a teacher is picked at random and the number of students in their class is noted. Okay, so there's only five teachers and these are the number of students in their classes. The averages formula that I prefer is a sum with a subscript of n divided by n is the average of those n things. In this case, the n is a five because there's five teachers, five entries in our calculation. So then uh, if we add them up, we know we get 100. It told us earlier. So you're going to get 100 divided by the five teachers is a average of 20. That must be T, not so bad. The next one's a little trickier, but not too bad. Um, next up, let S, and I put these little marks because I can't write in italics, um, be the average value obtained if a student is picked at random and the number of students in their class, including that student. In other words, if you're in this class, you don't put 49, okay? Uh, including that student is noted. What is T minus S? So 
in order to do the student one, there would be 50 students who all would give a value of 50. So I actually thought of two ways to do this. The first way I thought of was expected value, and that should work, but I didn't have perfect confidence that it would, and I knew this method would work. So first I did this. So I did 50 times 50. That's 50 entries of 50. There's gonna be 40 entries of 20, and there's gonna be 10 entries of five. And then I'm gonna divide that by 100, but I'm gonna write that as 10 times 10. Why 100? Because there's 100 entries. Each student is an entry into the average. So this 10 will cancel that 10, one of these zeros and one of these zeros. So we get 250 plus 40 times two is 80 plus five over 10. And so you get 335 over 10, which is a decimal place in, and you're going to get that S is 33.5. Now, the I, I did later on after I was done timing myself, going through the test, I went back to check to see, I mean, I feel like it should work, but I just didn't have perfect confidence. You know how you doubt yourself, which is a good habit to kind of be in as long as it's not excessive. Um, and I went back to check the expected value. How does expected value work? It's the probability that a student from this group is chosen, which is one out of two, because 50 out of the 100 students. So you're going to get one out of two times the value for that chance, which is 50. And then you're going to add, uh, there's 40 students, which is 40 out of 100. That simplifies to two fifths. The probability of selecting one of those students is two fifths times their value of 20. Each of them are gonna say 20. Even though they're in different classes, they'll still say 20. And then you're going to have 10 out of 100, which is 1 tenth, I don't have space, plus 1 tenth times their value of five. If you calculate this, you're going to get 25 plus 40 over five is eight, plus five over 10 is 0 0.5. You'll notice it's 33.5. If you had the confidence to do it that way, awesome job. And then um, if you didn't even, you could do it both ways and feel very confident that the answer will be T, which is 20 minus 33.5. You're gonna get B, negative 13.5. Sometimes doing a problem two different ways, as long as they're quick, can have a great effect because then you're not worried about that problem as you move forward. And 11 was quite the challenge. Let's get to that for problem uh, for AMC 10 when we write back.